what's going on gang welcome back to the channel man it's been about five weeks since the last video of the zy6 here man i've been busier than a squirrel in a peanut factory i have had side jobs out the yin yang just coming from every which direction man and you know you got to get the money when the getting is good okay gang we're gonna jump right back on the zy6 here i was going to move on but this thing has created a situation where i gotta address it right now Gang, what we're going to be doing in this video is upgrading to a 11 pole stator and a new regulator for the 11 pole stator. Now this is an AC and you can tell because one of the coils is wrapped. This is an AC stator and this is the matching regulator. Now we're going to have to do some custom work to the wiring, meaning this pigtail here is not going to work. Now gang, when I first put this bike together, when I first got it fired up and all wired up, I had an issue and truthfully, I just kind of like glazed over it like, eh, what's wrong with that? Eh, whatever. That's pretty much how it went. Now, the issue I had, guys, was when I first crunked the bike up and got my headlights wired up, as soon as I revved the bike, they popped. Okay, well, you know, that type of situation means your voltage regulator is no good. It's no bueno, right? Okay, well, I, I figured that. And I went and got a new one, some new headlights and um, put a new voltage regulator in crunk the bike back up and um, it popped the bulbs again so it's not the regulator right now about twice a week i come in here gang and i crank the bike up all the bikes i crank up chuck bagger i crank up the derby i crank up the killer b you know just to make sure everything is good i even crank up the um I can't remember what the other bike is, but it's another one. Oh, the uh, meth rocket. Yeah, I still got it. It's a long story about that, and I'll fill you in later. So, this is uh, about the second regulator this bike has had since being brand new. So, that's pretty much why my headlights are wired to a switch that goes to the battery. And uh, my taillights, you know, they're just already wired straight into the battery. So, that's how I alleviated the problem of my lights blowing. Now I'm not using the uh, pigtail for the lights, it's in here somewhere. But like I say, that's why the lights are wired straight to the battery. So after a while of running the bike, um, I wanna say now it's been about like eight, nine months ago, the voltage regulator one day just started smoking when I crunked the bike up, right? I don't know, you can, let me see if I can get it out of here so you can see it better. Hold on, give me a sec. Okay, I got that thing out. I'll try to show you guys. This one is not as bad as the other one, but right above the letters, kind of see like a little crack or a line going around. Well, this voltage regulator started to smoke just like the first one did. So, dang, that means I got a problem with this stator. Something ain't right, is overcharging. I know it's an AC powered stator, and uh, this is a uh, AC regulator for an eight pole stator. So, I don't know guys. Yeah, you can see, I kind of see that little line right above. Yeah, that's, it just starts spewing. So I came in here, I crunked the bike up, and um, really was getting ready to do a video on the weights. And then the thing just started smoking, and I was like, well, that video ain't gonna happen today. So I just kind of just basically pushed everything back in here, gang, and uh, went ahead and done the right thing, ordered the parts. So now we got the parts. There is a little bit of conversion work we gotta go do. I need to go to the uh, salvage emporium and get the correct uh, connections that we need. So let's go ahead and just uh, gather up some tools and head on over to the salvage emporium. Okay, gang, we got some bikes up here today, man. Check this out, we got a Honda Silverwing. I don't know what CC engine that is. That thing is freaking huge. That sucker also took a hell of a hit. Look at that, man. And we have a little 150cc short case, whatever thing, whatever this thing is. Now, when these bikes first got posted, guys, they were all complete. None of them were ripped up like this. This is what I can't stand when people come to the salvage emporium and they do not have the tools they need. They just break everything. You know, somebody could have used the body panels that were on this bike. <laughs> but it is what it be, man. All right, little old AMT, the AMT, Tau Tau Pony, whatever you call them things. They got about 50,000 names. This one is called the Tau Tau 50. So 
There that is there. Got a good old VIP land on the ground here. It's seen better days. Somebody came and got the back wheel. And uh, what is this? Amstar. Never heard of one of these. Now this thing here, ooh, yeah, look at that profile. And they was booking when they hit whatever they hit. All right, what kind of motor is that? Uh, it's just a 50. All right, and here we have a, um, what's this? A like 200 I also, that's a Kimco 200cc motor. Oh, Jesus. Man, I wish I had some money today, man. We po pimping right now, man. I got some goals I'm trying to meet. And see, stuff like this is how I've not been meeting my goals in the last couple years. So, man, it's going to hate to pass on this motor. 200cc. Look at that. Rear disc brakes. Now, that wheel is, is definitely bent. Bent really bad. And it's probably not easy to find. Man, look at that. I still would love to have it just to get that brake set up. I don't know. I might have to look into that real quick. We might have to grab that, at least that rear swing arm. I don't know. Hmm. Looks a little, a little bit GY6 ish, but I'm not sure. Okay, gang, let me go get some tools so I can get the uh, pieces I need, I gotta have, and. We'll make a decision on whether I'm going to dig into my piggy bank and spend more than I'm allowing myself to spend today. Okay, gang, back from the salvage emporium. Check it out. Now, I got the connectors that I needed. I already plugged that one in, kind of. Well, you see, I just got three yellow wires coming off this one. That bike, I actually took this one off. Had a 11-pole uh, stator on it already, but, you know, we don't trust those from the junkyard. They're too cheap to buy anywhere from Amazon. So, all I got to do is get some yellow wire and just make me a, a harness out of these wires that connect these three and these three. Uh, now inside the um, rectifier here, one of these wire goes to the battery and the other one is a ground and one goes to the ignition. So that's pretty much all I gotta do guys. But check this out. Now you know that light 200i bike that was in the uh, salvage emporium? Drop a picture right here okay now this bike was fuel injection i don't know if i mentioned that in the previous clips but it was fuel injection so i decided instead of coming in here and cutting these pigtails like i was going to do for our new rectifier i decided to just go ahead and, hey dude let me get this whole wiring harness with the throttle body check that out man now on the throttle body i don't know if that's the cdi or whatever it is we got to figure it out i got some learning to do but yeah, I got the whole thing. Now this hose went to the fuel pump. This thing had a uh, cylinder head temperature sensor right there. Yeah, got the um, fuel sending unit, which I didn't really want to, but you know, he didn't charge me for it. So forget it, I took it. Solenoid, I mean guys, I just basically unplugged everything. Now the fuel pump that was on the bike, drop a picture right there. Yeah, you see that? That fuel pump, dude, it was worth, not worth me paying even $5 for. Now, I'm thinking I might go back and get it because I need to um, see what it fit in our bike. Because now, this Yamaha 50F, you know, it was fuel injection. You see, I just got it plugged off, and I think it has the right amount of holes. I'm not sure, but guys, we're going to take this harness, this EFI system, and put it onto our bike onto the um the zy6 so we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of that carb and just switch it up to efi man but not gonna do it in this video this video we're just doing the uh, 11 pole stator upgrade so check that out man i mean that's a score it got the um ignition cylinder you know don't have a key but i got a shop here in town that can do what they call an impression and make me a key so no big deal there this bike even came with a 12 volt um charging a port or auxiliary port for your phone or whatever your gps i got the um the rectifier you know aka the regulator that's kimco check it out so yeah everything man the flasher whatever this thing is that says it has to be you know bolted that way up you know all the little switches everything even got the speedo guys check that out 
that bike had 4,591 miles on it. Yeah. And I mean, I might not use the Speedo with this bike, but I might, I'll try, you know. If I can make it look good on the bike, we'll give it a shot, you know. But hey, I couldn't help it, guys. I went there to spend $5, ended up spending $70. But hey, it is what it is. You got to get this stuff when you see it. So, okay, gang. Um, Let me go run real quick and get some yellow wire. And we're going to start building our harness for our 11 pole stator. All right, I'm back. Got some 14 gauge uh, wire. 20 foot of it. That should be enough. I'm thinking she only need about 15, maybe less. But oh, yeah, real quick. Now... This wiring harness, I think it's missing the CDI. So I'm gonna uh, do a little research on this Kimco wiring harness. And um, what else? Yeah, I need to go ahead and tape up these wires that I had to cut. This came from the headlight. Um, this one was, who see, I'm already forgetting. I know these two here are for the signals. There's a black one somewhere, yeah. These are signals, so. Yeah, let me go ahead and tape up all the wires that I can remember what they are and where they came from real quick. So that way, when uh, 3,700 months later, when I decide to go ahead and put this on the bike, you know, everything is uh, labeled and I know what it is. So let's go ahead and just start taking off the, uh, take the stator off or the cover. Let's get to all the wiring and get everything installed real quick. Get as far as I can right quick because somebody has called me and I got to make a run in a few minutes. got most of the body panels well all of the body panels that i need off are stripped off so now is a good time to show you guys that never saw this bike getting built this is the very first video on scooter rehab just scroll all the way down to the bottom of my videos the very first video but if you don't want to watch it let me show you how it is now okay now this is a small fast thing um skinny tire mount for the honda ruckus now I ordered this one because basically you see that big hole in the middle? That's what I want. I wanted to keep my carburetor in the stock configuration because now this wasn't meant for this bike. All of this engine package, all of this was meant for a Honda Ruckus build that I was doing that just never took off. So check it out gang. All I did was take a, well a 7 8 bar, 7 8 of an inch bar, I think that's what it is, across the frame and you see it just clamps right to it. Okay, now I got this pipe out of Lowe's. It's actually was for a gas welder. You can see some threads right there on the side. But yeah, it is what it is, man. It works. And look, all this time, it's not cracked. I'm just noticing I never put no paint over it. And it's not even really rusty. So yeah, I need to come back. Actually, my, my, my uh, mount, it has more rust on it than my frame does, which is crazy. But my bike's gonna sit outside. So anyway, you see I got to redo the mount for my uh, coil pack, which I'm getting to change this coil pack out anyway. That's another video. Yeah, my coil pack mount broke because I put something inside my seat bucket that was a little too uh, big and it snapped my mount. You know, look at those whales. Oh, that bubble gum wasn't going to hold anyway. Now, I did have to modify the inside of my seat bucket. You can see there where I cut out for that bar because that bar kind of sits up inside of there. Now, what, I've what I could have done was you know made a little plate to drop this bar down and weld it there but that would have raised the whole bike up and created a whole nother list of issues i could have put this uh, bar back gave it more of a stretch look guys but i like functionality you know i like you know the bike to handle good you know those stretch bikes i mean they look cool but to me i mean this is just my opinion i don't like how they ride you know that's why the uh killer b really doesn't get ridden that much because i'm just not into the stretch thing dude you know i want them to ride and write you know i want to be able to handle a curve you know at some good speeds you know that's what i want to do i'm just i'm all about functionality so yeah that's how i did my mount i just welded the bar across small fast things uh mount 
and only because it has the hole where I can run my carburetor in the stock position but you can get you a mojo customs mount you know that's about the best bang for your buck you know for a good strong mount get you a mojo you know then you can go step up you really got some bread get your cosmopolitan you know some of those all billet aluminum ones you know but hey me it's all about how much money i gotta spend now gang check this out the reason i'm thinking well you don't even know this is something i'm thinking inside my head hold on somebody's calling all right i'm back that was mom's calling you know i can't ignore that call because you know she's just not afraid to still whoop some butt she don't care how old you are okay gang now check this out now this bike the 50f like i said it was fuel injected you can see where the fuel injection used to set now i did drill a hole in the bottom of this tank and ran that fuel nipple out so we can run to our fuel pump over there and run this thing as carbureted all right so like i say i'm thinking about going efi i got this wiring harness and all that land over here that fits the intake and everything man you can see the injector in there so i'm thinking maybe i can use the fuel pump that came with the um yamaha i gotta go look at the specs and look at the psi to make sure they're both the same from that 200 or well, actually the engine wasn't a 200 cc the label up under the seat which is right here says 160 c 163 cc's so I don't know maybe it might work but i know i still have the fuel pump that goes into this tank and it still works so i'm gonna look at the specs and see if we can do that because i mean really all i gotta do is some little wiring you know what i'm saying and that's not hard you know we can figure wiring out okay now everything is wide open guys i can put the new stator on and make my wiring and route it so i got plenty of room up under here as you can see to run me a new wire so yeah let me go ahead and break out the electrical tools over in my electro digital box and let's start making the wiring harness for this Right, check this out gang we run into some good luck here now i got the stator already installed i'm not gonna put the fan or anything on yet i'm gonna try to get the bike back fired up before i put all this back together so check this out man i think this is where the regulator that was originally on the bike when it was um fuel injected this is where it came from check this out the new regulator <laughs> fits right there on those bolts man so all i'm gonna do is run another nut 10 millimeter nut all the way down like i got on this side where my ground wire is at and uh then just put two on top and that's all mounted i thought i was gonna have to figure something out
right gang it's been about six days since the last clip of this video guys you know mom's called and she told me to jump and you know the only answer to that is how high you know i don't want to you know get myself unalive in 2024 but okay gang where we left off i think i was finishing up the harness you know and i got it finished and i had to run so let me show you what i did okay all my connections here are done you know there's solder stick connections well the knockoff solder stick connections and these connections are really really good they're waterproof guys they're strong you can pull on them they're great i just gotta throw some black tape some loom or something around it gotta come in here and trip off my uh zip tie tails you know get all those tripped up uh trimmed up now guys i really should have just ran three new wires for the yellow wires that come out of the stator they go to the rectifier yes i should have just made a new harness yes 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 but right now this harness is temporary i am going to keep this harness for another bike so you know when i get ready to do it put it on another bike i will just run these three wires in their own separate harness but for right now this works so okay gang check it out let's crank it up all right see off is on and on is off Battery dead? Oh, come on, baby. Oh, yeah. There we go. Make sure our lights still work. Right, headlight is good. All right, let's shut this off. What I want to do, gang, is uh, let's test out and see what the... Um, the stator is putting out far as voltage you know now i should have tested this stator before we pulled it off i know i should have but you know it was already cooking the regulator and i burnt the tail light out so i didn't want to risk going ahead and trying to get numbers off that and smoking my harness you know so at a later date we'll throw this on some piece of crap bike you know we'll probably just buy a bike to play with you know a parts bike and we'll throw this stator on and we'll get some numbers then so, okay let's crank this thing up and then i need to disconnect the let's go ahead and disconnect it now i just have to hold it in fact let me get a clip just to hold this battery uh terminal on and then we can pull it off and just get the readings off the wires without being hooked to the battery so let me find something over here let's see where's my locking needle noses oh you know what they're in the car and i do not feel like going out there all right, let's see. Hey, hey, quiet. Calm down. All right, see if I can MacGyver something up real quick. I don't know what I'm trying to do, guys. Probably gonna burn down the shop. <laughs> yeah, that should work. Okay, let's turn this thing on so we can get our readings. All right, guys, this is just some uh, cheap voltmeter that I got off of Amazon. I think I paid like 20 bucks for this thing, but hey, it works. It does the basics. That's all I really need, dude. And it's, it's all auto, you know? I put it on. I don't got to set nothing. It just tells me what I need to know. All right, let's crank the bike up. Now, let's see what our battery is first before we start that. Get some more light. All right. Negative, positive, All right, our battery has 11.81 volts. So yes, the battery is low, okay? So, all right, let's fire this thing up and see what we're getting on the charging side. All right. That's actually lower. Disconnect the battery from the, um, the lead. See what we got now. Okay, uh, thing is putting in 8.9 volts. Oh, it looks like it's idle way too long. Alright, I had to bring that idle up. We got 11, I'll say 11 volts of charge. You guys can see that. Alright, let's test out our uh, regulator. 
1.4373, so a little over 11 volts in the uh, going into the regulator. Pretty much same on all wires. 11, 12, 11, 12. thing off dude it's getting a little carbon monoxide up in here open this door back up Whew. Jesus yeah, this thing smokes after you let it sit for a while that first couple runs man it just smokes man it's smoky I don't know if you guys you see that Ugh, Jesus and a little light hit it hold on let me open the door okay guys had to let that fumes out of here man I was getting a little light hit it Okay, gang, well, that's probably not the proper way to test your uh, stator, but, you know, it's just the way to let you know everything is charging. So, you know, we're getting a good 11 volts going into the uh, battery now, so that should take care of a lot of issues that we had. Hopefully, this new uh, rectifier and stator situation alleviates me blowing bulbs, you know what I'm saying, and blowing, re uh, blowing rectifiers, you know, that gets a little annoying, you know. So... I'm not going to put the bike back together right now, gang, because I have those Dr. Slider pulleys that should be coming in tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to use Sunday as just a day to start the next video and start the tuning on the bike. And, you know, once we get the bike pretty much where we want to, then we're going to go down the rabbit hole of putting on the new EFI system and then start this whole rabbit hole of problems all over again. Okay, gang? Well, I appreciate you guys watching the videos liking the videos commenting all you subscribers i appreciate every last one of you guys i'm gonna see you on the next one so i'm gonna end this video by saying deuces i'll see you guys on the next one